doing well today. I'm Eric uh, Diemel, um, tech support manager. Um, wanted to visit with you guys uh, today and just go over one of the common uh, questions or concerns or issues that we receive in tech support, and that is uh, skipping stitches. Um, if you call in to talk to tech support about that, we're going to basically go through a troubleshooting chart. I'm just going to ask you some questions and see if we can get that issue resolved for you. Um, so I want to share it with you today because uh, something, most of these things you can do on your own um, and things that are pretty easy to check and might save you a call uh, to tech support or to your dealer. So if you're having skip stitches, um, one of the first things we're going to have you check is uh, the needle. And we're probably going to ask you to install a new needle. Um, that would be the 134MR size 4 needle. And you want to make sure that when you install the needle, there's what they call the scarf of the needle. And it's this little indentation or this bump in the needle. And you want that bump to be facing you or toward the front of the machine. And you want the indention or the caved in side to be going toward the back of the machine. Um, we have that as the first step because many times when someone calls in and they're having skip stitches, that's the issue. They've just been in a hurry, um, weren't really thinking about the needle installation, and they've just put it in backwards. Um, all I have to do is spin that around to where it's facing the right way, and that will get them going again and get rid of the skip stitches. Um, if that doesn't fix your problem, um, we're going to have you check and see if the skip stitches are happening in constant or if it's happening in a computerized mode compared to a regulated mode. So regulated being something like um, regulate, coast regulate, or base. Um, and then if it is happening in a regulated mode, the um, thing we're going to ask you to check is going to be the encoders. Um, so if you want to come right here to the back of the machine. Um, it doesn't happen all too often, but we do see sometimes these encoders um, get off. Um, we've actually had a couple customers where the encoder was kind of pushed up and was resting down inside the track here instead of up here on um, the track itself where it should be. Um, that can definitely cause uh, some issues. The other encoder you want to check is the one that's on the back of your cross track underneath here. And that black wheel, that O-ring, should be riding on the outside of the track. If it's not, if it's up or down, or not even touching at all, you definitely want to do some adjustments and get that back on the track. Um, if that's not the issue, uh, then the next thing we're going to ask you is, do those skip stitches only occur when the machine stitches up toward the roller? So if you're going from front to back. Um, if it is, if you do have that issue where the machine is causing skip stitches and you're going from front to back, um, one of the things we're going to suggest is installing a larger needle. Sometimes that can help resolve that issue. Um, if that doesn't resolve the issue, then we're going to ask you um, about the tension on your quilt layers. You know, obviously you don't want it too loose because you don't want things bouncing around and causing problems, but you can have your quilt layers too tight, so you may need to loosen the tension on that just a little bit to avoid those skip stitches. If that doesn't work, next thing we're going to look at is the hopping foot height. Um, the hopping foot height can impact how well your machine is gliding onto the thread. Um, if, it's, if it's too low, it can be causing some issues. Um, but the hopping foot height can be adjusted fairly easily. And there's a video on the Gamma website. Um, I know a few weeks ago I talked with you guys about the maintenance videos that are available. You just go to gamel.com and click on uh, education and support and then click on video library and you'll see a video in there for adjusting the hopping foot height. Um, if that doesn't get it fixed the next thing we're going to look at is the hook to needle clearance and that would need to be done by making sure you've got your needle in the up position you're gonna remove your needle plate and you're gonna turn your needle down or rotate the hook step back here you want your needle all the way down and then you're going to rotate the hook until it passes through the back side of that needle right through the scarf and you can hopefully see on here that 
that is almost touching, but not quite. You want to get it as close as possible to the back of that needle without touching it. If you pass that through there and you see some deflection of the needle, then you've got it a little bit too close and we need to make some adjustments there. Um, if it's not, if you can see air between that hook and that needle as it passes, um, you've got too much space in there. Another thing you can do is come down in the front and just push on that needle tip and see if you have any deflection in the needle. If that needle's bending quite a bit or it's noticeable, then you've probably got too much space between your needle and your hook clearance. Um, that's another thing that if you need to adjust that, you can go on the Gamel site and check out the video for um, hook timing. Um, if that still doesn't cause, or sorry, if that doesn't resolve your issue, um, we're gonna suggest that you go back to the beginning of those steps and check through everything again because sometimes it is easy to miss a step or um, you just didn't catch something the first time around. I want to go back to, so there's basically two paths on this chart and that goes, that deals with whether or not um, the stitches only occur when the machine is going up toward the roller. So if you stitch and you're going up toward the pickup roller and uh, the stitches are skipping then, then you want to do everything we just talked about. Um, but if you're still having skip stitches going other directions, um, then we want to look at some other steps. And one of those is to look at the angle of the needle. And we want the angle of that needle, I'm going to show you a picture real quick of what we're talking about. So you can see going from the needle, there's a yellow dotted line pointing toward the back of the machine towards the thread cone holder. Um, that's the angle that you want your needle to be at. Um, we recommend that because the um, if you're going from front to back in a straight line, uh, that thread as it's coming through the needle has a hard time knowing whether it should stay on the right or it should stay on the left. And it can bounce back and forth and it can cause some of those zigzags, zigzag stitches that you'll see. Um, so if you have that angled a little bit to the left, to the back of that thread cone holder, that should avoid those zigzags and that can even also help eliminate some skip stitch issues. If that doesn't fix your problem and you can't go back to stitching like normal, um, then we're gonna talk about the needle height. And so if you wanna come around to the front, you'll wanna remove your bobbin case from bobbin case assembly down here. And you're gonna to wanna to lower your needle to its lowest position. Kind of move it up and down so you can see the needle there. Okay, so you get it to its lowest position and you want to make sure that about 60 to 90 percent of the eye of the needle is showing there. Um, if you've got none of the eye of the needle showing, then you want to definitely adjust your needle bar height uh, down a little bit. But if you can see the top edge of that needle eye, then you want to make sure that you are adjusting your needle bar up a little bit. And again, how do you do that? You go to Gamble's website, get on our video library, and check out the video for adjusting needle bar height. If that still doesn't fix your issue, uh, then we're going to look at hook timing. Um, we want to make sure that the timing is correct, uh, that hook as it goes around and passes the needle. And again, the video is on the Gamble website. It's listed under hook timing. Um, at that point, if we're still not getting it and we're having skip stitch issues, again, we're going to have to go through those steps again. And it's not that we think that you did anything wrong, but sometimes, like I said, it's just easy to miss uh, something or not see it the first time around. Um, so we're going to just go back and we're going to double check all those steps to ensure that we've covered everything we can. Um, and if we can't, you know, if you can't take care of it that way, um, if you've tried these things on your own, some of the things that you know you remember, oh yeah, I've heard about that, or I've referred to do this, or a friend told me to do this. And none of those things you're trying are working, you can call Gamble Tech Support. We'll walk you through the steps, make sure that everything's being done and checked properly. Um, alternatively, you can also call your local Gamble dealer and they can walk you through those steps as well. Um, if that doesn't get anywhere, then you may need to be looking at scheduling a visit with your dealer to check out the issue. So those are just some of the things to check for and to look for whenever you're having skip stitch issues. Um, like I said, some of them are, are pretty uh, simple fixes sometimes, such as having the needle in backwards, so it doesn't hurt to check those simple things. And good
could save you a lot of time on the phone. Um, if you've got any questions about what we covered, just post them in the comments. Everybody stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow at 3.